It is a beautiful early October day here in Mercer County and the CN8 sports cameras today have come to Princeton High School to watch the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs take on the Princeton Tigers. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Spahala. Welcome to today's contest between the visiting Hopewell Valley Bulldogs coming into this one at three and one and the homestanding Princeton Tigers currently two and two. I'm Paul Spahala. Hopewell Valley is coming into this one, as we said, 3-1 and one on the season. With his back to us is Dave Caldwell. He is the fourth season head coach of the fourth season program at Hopewell Valley High School. His Bulldogs are 3-1 and one on the season, coming off a 14-7 victory over Heightstown last week. Steve Everett in his sixth season as head coach of the Princeton Tigers. His club won their two games to open the season but are since on a two game losing streak having lost the Heights down two weeks to go and last week to Notre Dame so Steve Everett and the Tigers hoping to break that two game losing streak Hopewell Valley has won the toss they have elected to receive and they will defend the goal to our left that is Mark Kilstein wearing number four Kilstein and Matheny are back to receive for Hopewell Valley the the David Tigers. Griffin will kick it away for David the Princeton Griffin. Tigers. There you see Matheny and Kilstein back to receive for Hopewell Valley. This is a uh, very crucial matchup here in week five of the high school football season in Central Jersey Group 3. We'll get more into that as the game goes along. But this is a key battle for power points between the Tigers and the Bulldogs, and we are underway. Kilstein waiting for it. He'll take the ball in at about the 10-yard line. Big opening up the middle. And he'll bring it out just beyond the 30-yard line, and that is where the Bulldogs will start from. So spot the ball at the 32, and that is where Hopewell Valley will start from today. Drew Semple is their sophomore quarterback. Semple won a uh, three-player battle for the starting position, although it is possible that we will see a second or a possibly third quarterback today for Dave Caldwell's club. John Wolbach, Anthony Gibbons, Judah Matheny, backs and receivers, Rob Devlin, Andrew Kosek are the tight ends. We'll introduce the starting five linemen in just a moment. There is Semple wearing number 14. Semple will keep it, heads to the far sidelines, runs out of room there, but a good five or six yard pickup for the sophomore quarterback on That's first down. Don't it on the keeper. Matt Peck is the starting left tackle, Joe Tesoro the left guard, Tim Corwin the center, Nick Benedetto is the right guard, and Kevin Gilroy the right tackle. Semple calling his own number, five foot ten, 165 pound sophomore quarterback. Follows the blocking of Anthony Gibbons and credit him with a gain of six on the play, second and four. Semple again will keep it. Heads to the outside, the and will bring up a third and Semple about a two to go for the Bulldogs. Yards. Defensively for Princeton today, like we got a third and one. the front line is Matt Young, Larry Berry, Brandon Merrill, and Joe Cefeli. The linebackers, Dario Precipi, Doug Borchert, Luke Lavoy. And four deep for the Tigers, Zephram Gordon, Josh Gordon are the corners. And the safeties are Matt Abrams and John Miranda. Third and about a yard to go for the Bulldogs. Let's see if Semple calls his own number one more time. Instead, he will give it away to Gibbons. And Anthony Gibbons will have enough for a first down for the Bulldogs. Semple hands off to Gibbons for the first down. Tackled by number seven, Doug Worshard again. So three straight carries for the Bulldogs and a first down for the visitors. Seven starters back on offense for Hopewell Valley, nine on defense. The Bulldogs in their fourth season of renewing high school football. Play action pass. Simple rolling right, throws on the run, intercepted by Borchert. Doug Borchert with the interception, and Princeton will take over in Bulldog territory. Take a look at it on the replay. 
play action pass. Semple rolling out, had some room to run, decided to pull up and throw on the run, and there you see Borchert in triple coverage, steps in front of the pass, picks it off at the 46-yard line. Borchert, lone man in the backfield for the Tigers. He'll get the call, still on his feet, headed for the Princeton sideline. He'll pick up a couple on first down. Looks like a game of about three. Borchard and Luke Lavoie in the backfield. John Miranda, the split end. Alex Bozich and Brandon Merrill are the tight ends. Connor Ryan, the junior quarterback for the Tigers. Up front, Peter Murphy, Tom Hines, Joe Giacalone, Joe Cifelli, and Jordan Simpson. Call it a gain of two, second and eight for the Tigers. Borchard carried over 30 times last week against Notre Dame and he will get his second carry today. Still on his feet, finally wrestled down a little short of a first down. Defensively for Hopewell Valley, George Saliba and Ryan Clements are the ends. Matt Pagano and Alex McDonald are the tackles. The linebackers are Ken Stella, Kevin Clay, Zorain Niaz, and Matt Barnaby. Three deep for the Bulldogs, Brian Fisher, Paul Martori, and Mark Kilstein. Third and a yard to go for Princeton following the Borchert interception. Back-to-back -back runs by Borchert have the Tigers a yard short. Borchert again, a little trouble with the handoff, but he's got the first down. Knocked off his feet by Brian Fisher, but it will be a Tiger first down inside the 35. Little trouble on the handoff, you'll see on the replay. Ball almost popped free, but Borchard able to tuck it back in with the right hand. And there he's got the first down. Fisher knocks him off his feet. First down, Princeton. Spot the ball at about the 32. Ryan looking to throw. Pass is deflected, incomplete. Might have been George Saliba, number 68, who tipped it. It was either Saliba or Pagano. So following three straight runs, Steve Everett goes to the pass, but it's deflected at the line. Clements, number seven for Hopewell Valley, leads the CVC, the Colonial Valley Conference, in sacks so far this season. There you see Saliba, a very good wrestler in the winter. Second and ten, Princeton. Trevor Barsamian on the carry. Trevor Barsamian from about a carry of seven yards. And Barsamian will take it to the 25-yard line. Gain of seven on the play, third and three. So a nice run by the sophomore Barsamian. Eight carries last week against Notre Dame for 18 yards. Third and three for the Tigers. Spot the ball right at the 25-yard line. Borchard will be close to a first down. Fortune with the carry. Matt Barnaby knocks him off Barnaby. his feet. Ball will be spotted at the 31 and at that, and that uh, 21, excuse me. Down. And at that point it is a Princeton first down. So back-to-back -back first downs for the Tigers. Ball spotted at about the 16 yard line. Spot the ball at the 21, first and 10 for the Tigers. So Borchert on the first down carry following his interception. Ryan throws across the middle, knocked down, almost picked off by Matt Burnaby. Barnaby had it in his sights, just couldn't haul it in. Take another look at it on the replay. Connor Ryan looking to his right the whole way, and Barnaby reads that, slides over. Just can't come up with it. Pass was intended for John Miranda. Miranda had three catches last week against Notre Dame for 65 yards. Second and 10, Princeton. Ryan again looking right. Tosses to the outside for Borchert. That's going to be called a lateral. 
loose football, and it will be a loss of about seven That's for the Tigers. Seven on the lateral support shirt. Second and ten for the Tigers. 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 And the ball will land at the 29. Clearly a free ball. You can see the Hopewell coach on the sidelines recognized it right away. So a big loss on the lateral. So Princeton will have to regroup here third and long. Ryan slipped a little when he set his back foot, and his pass does not get out to Alex Bozic. Ryan tried to plant the back right foot, and it just slid out from under him. And because of that, he had nothing on the football, and it's short to Bozic. So on fourth down, Princeton looks like they're going to go for it. You get another look at it on the replay. Ryan is going to try and plant this back right foot, and watch right there. It just slides out from under him, and so does the left foot, as a matter of fact. So the ball spotted at the 28, fourth, and we'll call it 17. They'll need to get to just about the 11-yard line. Barsamian, lone man in the backfield, he's there to block. Ryan pumps once, spins, and he is wrapped up by Saliga, and a big loss on the play and on downs. Hopewell Valley will take over. Fifth sack of the season for George Saliba. Looks like McDonald got the tackle there for the Bulldogs. They're going to have a first and 10. So 7.30 to play in the opening quarter. Hopewell Valley will take over at their own 40. Take another look at it on the replay. Ryan looking to his left. The pocket breaks down, tries to spin out of it. And there, big number 68, George Saliba, wraps him up and brings him down. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Gibbons on the carry, tackle by Simpson and Borsher. Anthony Gibbons on the carry. For the Bulldogs. Now, John Womack and Chris Womack are two of a set of triplets at Hopewell Valley High School. Their other brother, Andrew, is on the track and field team running cross country in the fall. But uh, they say Anthony Gibbons is so much like the Womacks that the team has come to call him the third Womack brother. So he has taken over for Andrew, who uh, runs track and field. Gain of one on the play, second and 10, second and nine, excuse me. This is John Womack. Womack knocked off his feet by Barsamian after a big game. Little reverse to Womack there, tackled by Barsamian. John Womack last week, 10 carries, 65 yards in the victory over Heightstown. Hopewell Valley with their win last week equaled their win total of last year, which was the most in the program's young history. Fake to Gibbons, the give to John Womack. And it'll bring up a third and two for the Bulldogs. Lots of pressure from the right side of the Princeton defensive line, but Womack gets the call, fights forward. Just back to the original line of scrimmage, and it will be fourth and about two. Great pressure from the right side of the Princeton defensive line. And because of that, the play broke down right away. That was Cefeli who got in in a hurry. And Borchard able to track the play down. Fourth down and two, and the Bulldogs are going for it with 5.28 to go in the opening quarter. So a crucial early play in this football game. Trying to get the Tigers to jump. And they do not. We get a flag. Now the question will be, did Princeton go offside or did we get the delay again? Fourth and two. It is going to be called against Princeton. So an offside against the Tigers will cost them not only five yards, but the first down. First and ten. 
about the 47 yard line. So a crucial early play in this football game goes in favor of Hopewell Valley. They'll keep possession now in Princeton territory. Pitch back to Gibbons. Gibbons able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Joe Kirkner, sophomore defensive tackle, wraps him up. Tackle by Hines and Kirkner. Spot the ball at the Tiger 45. Call it a gain of two on the play for Gibbons. Hopewell Valley last had varsity football in 1932. They did not have football for over 70 years. And finally, a group of parents got together and took over financial responsibility for the first year of the program. Since then, the Board of Ed has taken over. Maybe a yard for John Woman. Ball marked at the Tiger 43. Hopewell Valley played freshman football in 2002, freshman and JV in 03, and 04 was their first varsity season since 1932. Herbert Hoover was president then. I voted for him. Third and six. And we are going to get a timeout, a timeout called by the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. So with 3.40 to go in the opening quarter, Hopewell Valley was 0-10 that first season, 1-9, in 2005, their only win came against West Windsor Plainsboro North, and three and seven last year, and they are already three and one this year. Princeton has won the first three meetings between these clubs, 24-9 last year, 35-7 the year before, and 27-7 back in 2004. Interesting setup here at Princeton in that both sets of fans are on this near sideline. There are no stands on the far side. Third and six for the Bulldogs following their timeout. 3.40 to go in the opening quarter. I'm Paul Spahala. You're watching high school football here on C8 Sports. Play action pass, simple. Forced from the pocket, completes it alone. It's incomplete. Womack wasn't able to hold on at the near sideline. Pressure coming, so Semple's pass to the near side. Yep, you get a much better view on the replay ball. Just popped out of Womack's hand. Fourth and six for the Bulldogs. Now, they went for it on their own half of the 50. Let's see if they're going to go for it here on the Princeton half of the 50. Either way, they're taking a lot of time. That ball is made ready for play, and once that happens, Hopewell Valley is going to send on the punting team. Rob Devlin is number 88. He will do the punting. There you see Devlin. John Miranda stands at the Princeton 10. So Devlin will kick it away on fourth and six, has trouble with the snap. It is blocked by the Tigers. At midfield. It was Peter Murphy, number 50, who came through and blocked the punt. And Princeton will take over at the Hopewell Valley 49. The Tigers are going to take over on offense here. Devlin had trouble First with the snap, the and there you see Murphy 49. with the block. So with 3.23 to go in the opening quarter, Princeton gets a blocked punt, and they take over in Hopewell Valley territory. 
new quarterback for the Tigers. Olentine hands it off to Borchard. Mike Olentine, a sophomore, has taken over at quarterback for Princeton. He gives it off to Doug Borchard. Now Princeton used a block punt in the second game of the season to drive downfield, kick a field goal by David Griffin for the only points in a 3-0 victory over the Nottingham North Stars three weeks ago. Let's see if the Tigers can turn another block punt into points today. Olentine now in at quarterback. He gives it off to Borchard. Borchard coming to left, finds a big gap. Borchard out in the open. 20, 15, 10, can he get to the end zone? Dives! And he's being marked down at about the one yard line. And we have an injured Hopewell Valley player down right at the goal line. That is Kilstein number four. Kilstein is down at the goal line. Borcher tried to leap over Kilstein, but just could not make the goal line. But a big run by Doug Borchert. Here's a look at the run by Borchert. Watch for the big gap on the left side of the line. Big hole, Borchert will break through. And now it's a foot race to the end zone. Kilstein number four is gonna come over right at the goal line. There he is at the 10. Here comes the attempt for the tackle. And the knee of Borchert hits it about the one. It looked as if Kilstein took Borchard's knee right in the back. There you see Doug Borchard. 32 carries last week for 155 yards against Notre Dame. He actually had 181 rushing yards opening night against Steiner. And 171 yards against Heightstown in that loss two weeks ago. The concern, of course, now for the senior cornerback from Hopewell Valley, Mark Kilstein. Here's a look at the hit right at the goal line. There you see Kilstein dives at him. There, Borchert in the air. And his knee does come down at the one-yard line. And the ball is just slightly behind the goal line. But it did look as if when he was hurdling Kilstein, it now looked on that replay as if Borchard's left knee caught the side of Kilstein's helmet. We will take a short break right now with 3.04 to go in the opening quarter. The score is Hopewell Valley nothing, Princeton nothing. You're watching high school football here on CN8 Sports. can't do it all. Do what you can. Compassion for others. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. My name's Lisa, and in nine years I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Hi Lisa. Lisa. I'll start drinking in eighth grade, and I'll do some things I don't really want to do. So by the time my parents talk to me about it, Alcohol won't be my only problem. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. 
My parents won't believe it could happen to me. Welcome back, everyone, to Princeton High School. 3.04 to go in the opening quarter. Hopewell Valley nothing, Princeton nothing. The good news, Mark uh, Kilstein was able to walk off the field after some uh, quick medical attention. Got a nice round of applause from all the fans here. So it'll be a first and goal. There you see Kilstein. So good news following that tackle at the goal line. It'll be first and goal for Princeton from the one. Lavoy and Barsamian in the I formation backfield. It is Lavoy fighting forward, waiting for a signal. He's in. Luke Lavoy with a touchdown. A one yard touchdown run by Luke Lavoy. With 2.49 to go in the first quarter, Princeton, six, Hopewell Valley, nothing. Griffin on for the extra point. Olentine, the holder. And Griffin's kick is good. Quarter. Here's the touchdown run by Lavoie. Just straight ahead power by number 34. Dove to the left, punched it in from the one. Griffin added the extra point. Go, and again, this all was set up by the blocked punt by Peter Murphy. And then the long run by Doug Borchert. So Princeton was not able to capitalize on a turnover on the first possession that the Borchert interception but they do capitalize on the blocked punt, as they did two weeks ago against Nottingham. And so Princeton, who has not won since that 3 nothing victory over Nottingham back on September 15th, hoping to turn another blocked punt into a win today. So Princeton out in front first. For Hopewell Valley, that is just the fourth touchdown they've allowed this season in this, their fifth game. They opened up with back-to-back -back shutout victories over Robbinsville and West Windsor Plainsboro North, 13-0 and 14-0. They lost 14-9 against Trenton, and last week a 14-7 victory over Heightstown. But it is Princeton that jumps out to the 7-0 lead here late in the opening quarter. Griffin will kick it away. Now remember that Kilstein had back, been back to receive the kicks, and so now that, is, that duty is going to fall to Anthony Gibbons. Instead, it will be Matheny who will take it. And Matheny will bring it out just beyond the 30-yard line. Joe DeRamo with the tackle. So the Bulldogs will go from their own 31-yard line, first and 10. Semple still in at quarterback for Hopewell Valley. He's rolling to his right. DeRamo chasing him. Throw deep and incomplete, looking for Kosek. Semple over shoots. Kosek bringing up a second and ten for the Bulldogs. Semple trying to buy some time with the rollout. 
Kosek got downfield, but not deep enough to get under that pass by the sophomore, Drew Semple. Again, wouldn't be a shock to see another quarterback in the ball game for Hopewell Valley. They did have those three players fighting for the job, trying to replace Drew Barnaby. Graduated last year with over 1,000 passing yards for Hopewell Valley. Second and 10 for the Bulldogs. Nathaney slides over to the right side of the formation. Nathaney, the intended receiver, a little far for him. Had a dive for the football, could not bring it in. Pass incomplete to Nathaney. Well designed play, Semple's pass, however, a little too much on it and a little too far out of the reach of Metheny. So back-to-back -back incompletions will make it a third and 10 now for the Bulldogs. Semple rolling right. DeRamo deflects the pass. Joe DeRamo was right on top of the Hopewell Valley quarterback. And number nine for Princeton knocks the pass away and it'll bring up fourth and 10. So a very good defensive sequence for Princeton. And Devlin again expected and he does go back to punt. Had his last punt blocked by Murphy following a low snap. There you see DeRamo who deflected that last pass. So fourth and 10. This time a much better snap. Devlin gets the kick away. Miranda calls for the fair catch. Fair catch by Miranda at the And Princeton will take over at their own 38. The Tigers are going to take over on a 38 with a first and 10 coming up. 2.15 to go in the opening quarter. Princeton 7, Hopewell Valley nothing. Orchard, lone man in the backfield. He'll get the call. Stutter steps to his left, cuts back to his right, maybe a yard on the play. Give the Borchard tackle by Barnabay. Looks like a second and eight for the Tigers. Mike Olentine, second series in at quarterback, hands it off to Borchard. Borchard trying to go to the right side. Drags a tackler for about five yards. He goes wide to the right. Then he gained about five. Third and three coming up for the Tigers. Doug Borchert. One of two three-year starters out on the field for Princeton along with John Miranda. There you see he drags Kevin Clay for a couple extra yards. Borcher to his left, takes the hit, dives forward, and it will be a Princeton first down. Tackled by McDonald. And a first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Let's go, Came into the game with 595 rushing yards. Borchert, left side, along the sideline, pushed out of bounds, but he'll take the ball he just to the 40-yard line. Tackle by Matori. Looks like Borchert got about seven on that carry. Second and three for the Tigers. Let's go, Oakland! Gain of seven on the play, second and three for Princeton. Barsamian pushes the pile forward. Give to Barsamian, he fights ahead for about 
Takes it inside the 40. We'll wait for the spot. He needed to get to the 38 for a Princeton first down. And it will be about a yard shy. So third and one for Princeton. Going with a hurry up offense. Barsamian is not going to have the first down. Kevin Clay, the first man to hit him. And it will now be fourth and about a yard to go. 35 seconds to go in the quarter. Griffin is the punter. But Steve Everett has sent in his offensive unit. Looks like they're going to go for it here. Fourth and a yard to go. They don't have to snap the ball in this opening quarter. Slight wind blowing from our left to our right. Fourth and a yard to go. Six seconds to go. Let's see if Princeton gets the snap off in time. No, they do not. We have run out of time here in the opening quarter. The with the score, quarter. Princeton 7, Hopewell Valley nothing. You're watching high school football on C8 Sports. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Welcome back, everyone, to Princeton High School on a gorgeous early October day. I'm Paul Spahala. Princeton 7, Hopewell Valley nothing. Luke Lavoy, a one-yard touchdown run after a long run by Doug Borchert. Placed the ball at the one. And that whole drive set up by the Peter Murphy block of a Hopewell Valley punt. Steve Everett, fourth and a yard to go. Sending out his offense. They are going to go for it. The ball is spotted at the Hopewell Valley 39-yard line. So it's fourth and a yard to go for the Tigers. Olentine, the quarterback. Pitches it to Borchert. Borchert has the first down. Still going out of bounds at a 32-yard line, and it is a Tiger first down. Now before the game, Steve Everett said that Doug Borchert will get his 25 or so touches today, and it would have shocked pretty much everybody here if Borchert did not get the call on fourth and a yard to go. And he just takes it to the outside, down to the 32, first down Tigers. 7-0 lead for the home team. Pitch back to Borchert. Reads his blocks, reads the defense, still going inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line. Great job of running by the six-foot-one senior, Doug Borchert. Watch for Borchert, how he doesn't sprint beyond his blockers. He's going to do a great job here of reading his blocks, cuts inside of that block by Dwyer, and then just uses a great field of vision to watch for the defense. 17 yard line, first down, Princeton Tigers. Great job of running by Borchert, excellent blocking up front. Barsamian fights his way to the 10. Tiger, second and four. 
And Trevor Barsamian, the sophomore, has done a very good job here in this first half. We get a Hopewell Valley timeout. Very good job of giving Borcher just a little bench time, just to get a breather. Timeout, Bulldogs. So Hopewell Valley uses their second timeout of the half. Princeton still in Central Jersey Group 3. Hopewell Valley has moved up from Central 2 to Central 3. And halfway to the playoffs, it is Moorestown at 4-0 and Middletown South at 4-0, sitting on top of the Central 3 power points. Coming in at number 7 and tied for 7, Hopewell Valley with 18 power points, Princeton with 18 power points. So the two clubs fighting it out for that number seven and eight spot in power points. Obviously the winner of today's ball game will get a big step up over the loser in Central Three. Interesting section in that everybody in the section has at least a victory. Following the timeout, second down, Princeton, just shy of the 10-yard line. That is Josh Gordon trying to go to the outside. Josh Gordon at the five, short of the goal line, but Gordon will give the Tigers first and goal. Josh Gordon, another sophomore in the backfield along with Barsamian. First and goal, Princeton from the one. The big offensive line for Princeton moving to the left. Again, Dwyer with a big block. And then Gordon will do it himself. Cuts to the goal line, forced out at the one. First and goal, Lavoie in front of Borchert. Eye formation. Lavoie took it in last time. It will be Borchert. And he will walk into the end zone for the second Princeton touchdown. Princeton 13. Hopewell Valley nothing. Griffin in for the try. David Griffin on for the PAT. Again, Olentine the holder. Griffin's kick is good. Tigers now lead 14 to nothing with 10.55 left to go in the second quarter. Lavoie will lead the blocking. Borchert will follow him as he did earlier. Look at that offensive line push everybody to the left, and Borchert just has to step across the goal line for the 14 nothing lead. Steve Everett told me before the ball game that his club has taken on the new nickname MOB, the Missed Opportunity Bunch. Feeling that they've had their chances but haven't converted, particularly in the last two weeks. Well, today they have converted most of those opportunities. They couldn't do much with the Borchard interception on the first possession. But since then, a blocked punt resulted in the Lavoie touchdown run and a very solid defensive effort forced a Hopewell Valley punt. And Borchard this time took it in from one yard out. So the opportunities have presented themselves today for Princeton, and they have taken advantage of them. 14-0 lead, 10-55 to go in the half. Good news, bad news for Hopewell Valley. Mark Kilstein is leaving the field of play. So the bad news is he's done for the day. The good news, of course, he's making his way off the field on his own power. Gibbons will take the kick. Takes it across the 30-yard line. Has some room. Still on his feet at the 40. 45 at almost the 50-yard line. So a great return by Anthony Gibbons has given the, the Bulldogs new life at midfield. The 
50 with a first and 10. A great run back by Anthony Gibbons. The Bulldogs needed a little something here. Stepped in front of his own man to get the football. Reads his blocks, gets a great block there. And then from the 40-yard line for the last 10 yards, it was extra effort by Gibbons for the first down. Semple hit the turf with the football. Automatically down, of course, in high school ball. Looks like his legs got tangled up with one of the pulling guards. Second and 14 for the Bulldogs. It'll be a loss of three on the play. Let's see if we can spot it on the instant replay. Now Semple just got his leg tangled up with the left side guard. Loss of three, second and 13. Womack, right back to the line of scrimmage. Knocked down by Borcher. Flag on the play. Tackle by Barsamian. Holding against the Bulldogs. It's going to be holding on the offense. Wouldn't be shocked to see Princeton decline this one. Well, it looks like they're going to take the yardage and make uh, well, Hopewell it. Valley go second Valley. and long. Would have been a, a good call either way. It's now second and well, about 24. So it's going to be second and 24 for the Bulldogs. It would have been third and about 13. So either way, it would have worked in Princeton's favor. The Tigers are going to take the 10 yards. Hoping to hold Hopewell Valley on back-to-back -back downs, force the punt and get real good field position. And so far, the Princeton defense has been well up to the task. Best drive for Hopewell Valley might have been the first possession of the ball game. Semple forced from the pocket by Young, and Young is going to wrap him up and drop him for the sack. Matt Young cut out, cut off the outside route. And Semple just had nowhere to go, and the six foot three senior just tracked him down in the backfield. Watch for big number 81. He'll be at the bottom of your screen, and he'll be in the entire play. Nowhere for Semple to go. And then when Semple tried to turn the other way, he saw that Barsamian was going to block that route. By the time he made that other decision, Young was on top of him. So it'll now be third down from the 28. Third and 32. Not a lot of plays in your playbook for third and 32. And Young with the deflection. So Matt Young with back-to-back -back great defensive plays for the senior defensive end. First the sack. And then, sensing the pass to the outside, jumped up, knocked it down, and it will be fourth and long for the Bulldogs with plenty of time left for the Tigers. 8.32 to go in the half, and all three timeouts. Again, number 81 coming from the bottom of your screen. And right there, anticipates the pass, jumps up and blocks it. Devlin for the third time today, punts it away. Short kick will not reach midfield. It will with one hop, and it will be out of bounds right Ball at the 50. Spot it right at about the 50-yard line. So Princeton takes over 8.24 to go in the half and three timeouts. Yeah, first and 10 for the Tigers. With 8.24 left to play in the second Steve quarter. Everett uh, says that at least once a game, his offensive line has been able to put together a 12-play drive. And they could certainly use a 12-play drive right here, put points up on the board, eat up most of the half. First down, right from midfield. Again, it's Gordon. Slowly makes his way back to the line of scrimmage. Game about 
final one. Tackle by Saliba. The second and nine for the Tigers. A yard on the play for Josh Gordon. Fake to Gordon, throwing for the sideline, complete to Nick Miranda. Five foot five sophomore Nick Miranda on the receiving end. Tackle by Clay, and a third and five for the Tigers. Play action pass. Nice delivery by Olentine. And Miranda knocked out at the 45-yard line. Pick up a four, third and five. Clock stops with 7.34 to go in the half. Nick Miranda to the left. His older brother John split out to the right. Barsamian met in the backfield. By Matt Clay. Pagano with the hits. Matt Pagano, 5'8", 270. Number 56, just the junior. Number 56 reads out the play, fights off a block. Griffin will punt it away. Hangs it up inside the 20, takes a Princeton roll inside the 15, and it will be downed at the 13. Abrams downs the ball at about the 12-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will start. So the Bulldogs will go from that spot with 6.50 to go in the half. First and 10 for the Bulldogs with about 6.50. And they trail by 14. Quarter. Semple rolls to his right. Semple with the keeper. Dives to about the 19 yard line. So a good pickup on first down for the sophomore. Second and four for the Bulldogs. Second down for the Bulldogs. Semple rolling to his right, has to cut back. Semple escapes the tackles in the backfield. Game of about three. Dives Tackle to the 23. It will be close to be a first down. Inches here. Matter of fact, Ray Stupinski, who is our referee, is going to Ask for a timeout, we'll bring the chains out. Ray Stepinski is our ref. Armando Rosario, the umpire. Jason Wigman is the headlinesman. Dave Scorney, the line judge. Good Jack Johnston day. is the back judge. And Dennis Gall is the clock operator. That is your crew for today's Hopewell Valley Princeton game. 5.44 to go, just short. As you see, Ray yeah, Stepinski show just We're short of a first down. Left in the second quarter. So a critical third and inches for Hopewell Valley here. Not only to try and get on the board, but also not to turn it over to Princeton near midfield with plenty of time to go in the half. So a crucial third down play 
midway through this second quarter. Semple dives forward, and the pile pushed forward to about the 25, and that will be more than enough for a Hopewell Valley first down. It's gonna be first and 10 for the Bulldogs. From about the 26 yard line for the Bulldogs. Ball spotted just across the 25. Nose of the football rests on the 26. Hopewell Valley, three wins last year, three wins already this season. Tackle by Simpson. Run by Chris, Chris Womack on the carry. For no game. Second attempt for the Bulldogs. Womack, 81 rushing yards last week against Heightstown, including a 20 yard touchdown. But stopped at the line of scrimmage on that play, second and 10. And the Bulldogs need to be able to stretch out the Princeton defense a little bit. They've not had success with the pass so far this afternoon, and they'll need to do that. Womack, nothing. Joe Kirkner got him right in the backfield. Kirkner with the tackle in the backfield of Womack. Third and 11, Joe third Kirkner. Third and 11 coming up for the Bulldogs. Watch big number 72, read the play. And right after the handoff, Kirkner wraps up Womack. Under four minutes to play in the half. Neary split to the left side. Third and 11, Hopewell Valley. Semple rolling right. Just Semple across the line of Kirk. scrimmage. Doramo with the tackle. About three, tackled by Doramo. Going to be fourth. And on and fourth. Seven for the Bulldogs. And about eight to go. Hopewell Valley will punt it away. This will be the fourth punt of the afternoon for the Bulldogs. Princeton Definitely has only punted punt once. For the Bulldogs. We'll be kicking to Miranda. Miranda about five yards into Princeton territory. Last kick was a little short. Let's see if Miranda's moved up a couple of steps. This one a good floating kick. Miranda calls for the fair catch, takes it fair catch at the 38. Yard line by John Miranda. That is where the Tigers will have a first and ten to start. So Princeton has two minutes, 52 seconds to go in the half. Almost a four minute possession for Hopewell Valley, but they come up empty. Devlin's punt gives them a little bit of defensive room, but remember Princeton has their full complement of three timeouts to use on this drive. 2.52 to go, Dave Caldwell's club will have to try and find a way to generate some offense at the half. And He's obviously concerned that they only go in 14 down. Let's see what the Tigers do here to go with 2.52 to play. Borcher tripped up in the backfield. Up in the backfield. Good pursuit by Kevin Clay. 